Hi, my name is Coldbear and let's start with Satisfactory. Here you will defeat nature by building massive factories everywhere. Expand wherever and however you want, without any annoying regulations we have here on Earth, because you are not on Earth anymore. All those animals and plants that live here are scientifically unimportant. They live to serve you and your factory. Here you'll find about 30 square kilometers, which is about 11 square miles of terrain filled with unique flora and fauna. You can recycle everything and make factories out of them. Build beautiful metal constructions instead of ugly nature, cover the whole surface of the planet with your elegant conveyor belts and train tracks. Make that pathetic natural habitat disappear and make beauty instead. Be a true hero of the industrial era. Besiege this is a physics-based building game in which you construct medieval siege engines and lay waste to immense fortresses and peaceful villages. Build a machine which can crash windmills, wipe out battalions of brave soldiers and transport valuable resources, defending your creation against cannons, archers and everything else. Game looks beautiful, the art style is 10 called Veers out of 10. And the same is difficulty, at least at the beginning, because my machines did more harm to themselves than to their surroundings. Anyway, I promise you that after a bit of practice, you will build your incredible mechanical potato of terror and destroy some peaceful castles. City Skylines this is, without a doubt, the best realistic city-building game ever made. They took inspiration from SimCity games and upgraded the concept up to perfection. But if you want full game with all the DLCs, without a discount that would cost you around 400 euros or similar amount of dollars. Even on the sale the cost is above 200. That is ridiculous. Yeah, and the base game as you can see is just a mere fraction of that. So basically I understand that you have to make money for the work you do, but honestly guys, no full single-player game should cost 400 100 euros. You can buy a Nintendo Switch or almost buy a Steam Deck for this price. Despite that, the game is great. Try it out. Astroneer Game is set during the 25th century intergalactic age of discovery. Here astroneers explore the frontiers of outer space, risking their lives in harsh environments to unearth rare discoveries and unlock the mysteries of the universe itself. In this space sandbox adventure you can work together with other players to build custom bases above or below the ground, create vehicles to explore a vast solar system and use terrain to create anything you can imagine. So basically you are invading beautiful planets with beautiful nature and making an industrial hell out of them. Yeah, screw nature, the galaxy is full of it. People on Steam are saying that here you are your own worst enemy. You will fall off the cliffs, touch deadly plants and forget something at your base that is half a galaxy away. Yeah, anyway, very positive reviews are here for a reason. Almost everyone loves the game and there is a huge chance that you will love it as well. Gary's Mod. This game is really just a giant toy box. Absent of any objectives and rules, it will provide you with various props, character models, and a whole load of tools from which you can create all manner of weird and kinky stuff. You spawn objects and weld them together to create your own contraptions. Whether that's a car, a rocket, a potato salad, or something that doesn't have a name yet, it's up to you. You can do it offline or join the thousands of players who play online each day. Yeah, no joke, the game was released 17 years ago but I can see that while I'm doing this voiceover there are 60,000 players online simultaneously. The Garry's Mod community is a tremendous source of content and has added hundreds of unique modes to the game. You can be a plant, a soldier, or a beer bottle, or just beer without bottle, you name it. Everything. Now, if you wondered if we live in a simulation, this game is a great example of how it can go if someone who created or simulated universe decided to play a bit with it. And I'm not talking about making your nose even larger for fun, no, game has a much bigger scale, although not as big as your mama. Everything is an interactive experience where every object in the universe is a playable character, from animals to planets to galaxies and beyond. Travel between outer and inner space and explore a vast interconnected universe universe of things without enforced goals, scores or tasks to complete. This is a sandbox where you can sink a lot of your time, and it is more for not than an actual game, but it works as a great stress reliever, some say even better than potato salad. No, actually nobody said that, at least in this universe. Kenshi 
This is a free roaming squad based RPG focusing on open ended sandbox gameplay. You can be a trader, a thief, a rebel, a warlord, a slave, or just food for the cannibals. The freedom is here and it's up to you how you would use it. You can research new equipment and craft new gear, purchase and upgrade your own buildings to use as safe fortified havens when things go bad, or use them to start up a business. Well, it's a sandbox game after all. You can aid or oppose the various factions in the world while striving for the strength and wealth necessary to simply survive in the harsh desert. You will train your men up from puny victims to master warriors, carry your wounded squadmates to safety and get them all home alive. The game is purely single player and it's an owner of overwhelmingly positive reviews left by tens of thousands of people. Kerbal Space Program while the second part of the game is still a disaster with 50% of review score, the first part will never fail to entertain us. This game is fun, but also it is very hard. Here you'll have to create your own spaceship and rocket science is anything but easy. It's not your sister. Wait, what? Anyway, building a spaceship here reminds me of creating abominations in Spore. Every detail can be scaled, turned and attached to another detail, so you have to do everything right in order to take a space flight. Game has a really good physics engine, so you can take off successfully with a giant unicorn or something. But if you practice enough, you can send a giant potato salad bowl to the moon. Nah, you probably can't, but you can try. Minecraft so basically everyone knows the game. Although among all the people there is a false misconception that Minecraft is only for the younger generation. It is not, that is nonsense. Many years ago, when I was some 30 and plus years old, I played Minecraft every day for half a year. I even started a dedicated YouTube channel. It wasn't like nowadays where people play Minecraft with friends and have ridiculous amounts of fun. No, I played it alone, I never had friends anyway and uploaded my adventures to the internet. Honestly, in half a year I collected about six hundred subscribers and then I abandoned the game and the channel forever. It wasn't because I got bored, but rather because of the changes in my own life. When I got my first job as a screenplay writer on TV, started to work with local self-important TV stars and so on. So if you think that Minecraft is not for you, that is not true. This is an incredibly immersive game where you will never run out of things to do. Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord in this open-world strategy RPG sandbox, you will create and develop a character that matches your playstyle. Explore, raid and conquer your way across a vast medieval world where no two playthroughs are the same. You will raise armies, engage in politics, trade, craft weapons, recruit companions and manage your clan. You will command and fight alongside your troops in first or third person. Participate in huge real-time battles using skill-based combat system. You can also test your might against players from all over the world in multiplayer PvP, including ranked matchmaking and casual game modes or host your own server. The only downside, according to Steam players, is that the game is very addictive. Just like potato salad, if you start playing there is no way you can simply quit doing that. And yeah, I personally know a dude who played 60 hours of it in just one day. True story bro, I would never lie to you. Animal Crossing New Horizons My wife has been playing this game for more than a year now. Every day she shakes trees, plants vegetables, gives and receives gifts and makes her island more beautiful. There are no actual goals in this game except to make your island better, so at first it can seem a bit overwhelming. There is so much to do, but you don't even know how to start and where. So basically here you take a loan from a raccoon and start building and making money. When you give all your debt to the raccoon back, then he offers you to take an even bigger bigger loan, and after that even bigger and bigger again. So at all times you are in debt to the raccoon, he's like some mafia boss. Yes, yes, everyone is in debt to the padre raccoon. But the bigger loan you take, the more stuff you can do and the more money you can earn, so you can give more back. Game also uses real life time, and not only for day and night, for seasons as well. So when it's dark and snowy outside, it's the same in your game, except it's cozy and fun. Although if you want you can skip time, but that may ruin the immersion pretty badly, so I don't recommend doing that. The Sims 4 Everyone knows the game. The Sims 4 is the ultimate life simulation and sandbox playground. Here you can create unique characters, build dream homes and let chaos unfold. Well, you know that already, but do you know that the game is free to play? Yeah, you can download it at any time and enjoy growing tiny humans, breeding them and watching how they occasionally set themselves on fire. The secret why this game became free is of course because it has so many DLCs and they have to sell them to you. And by many I mean 14 various 
expansions. Some of them you can acquire for a few euros and some of them are more expensive than most of the games nowadays. So keep that in mind, the game is addictive and may extort you out of your hard-earned assets. Prison Architect Welcome to the prison. And not a prison of your mind you are living in right now, but a real one. Well, real is a relative term here. The game works somehow similar like any dungeon manager game. Well, more like literally the same. Except your inmates do not have as much of free will here, if you know what I mean. Anyway, here you will build an amazing maximum security prison where you can be a sadistic tyrant and torture your inmates. Or, I don't know, Norwegian prison where inmates live better than people in freedom in most of the countries. I just saw on TV one documentary and their prisoners had better TVs and furniture than I do at my home. So you know, you can help me out by supporting me on Patreon or joining here on YouTube. By the way, did you know that Prison Architect has a 3D mode as well? This is not a mod or something, you can turn it on or off anytime you want. Just don't drop the soap. Universe Sandbox 2 in a sense, it's not a game, but a serious physics and astronomy simulator. But despite that, we all know what you're gonna do here. Smash that asteroid into another asteroid. Smash the moon into the planet. Smash the sun into the black hole. Smash the black hole into another black hole. Smash! Yeah, or you can create a calm, nice solar system where everyone lives in peace and prosperity and then wipe everything out in a terrible cosmic event. Games like this show us that everything we got can be instantly destroyed by one wandering star and there is nothing we can do to prevent it. Like, absolutely nothing. If another star flies nearby, everything will end for humanity. We are all alive just because no star decided to swing by. Yet. Project Zomboid the fact that this game is in early access from, wait for it, from 2013, so 10 years now, doesn't scare the crowd of giving it a very positive review score, with the recent 8000 reviews being in an overwhelmingly positive range. So what is this phenomenal title? Well, to say simply, it's a zombie survival game. But to say that, it's just like scratching the surface of the whale balls with your nail. And I'm not sorry for putting this picture into your head. Also, now you're thinking. Do whales actually have them? I don't know, it's for you to google I guess, I'm not brave enough. So Project Zomboid is a sandbox and your goal is to survive as long as you can. So basically this is an enormous world full of opportunities to die horribly, in one way or another, sooner or later, but you know, you will. You can play the game alone or with friends, even 4 player split screen co-op mode is available. That is for sure not a thing you may casually encounter, but you know what you will encounter casually here? Depression, boredom, hunger, thirst, illness, cold night electricity shortages, hordes of zombies and winter. Winter is coming. And you, you don't have proper clothes. But I have. No, no you don't. Give those to me. RimWorld this game is always in the top 10 by rating among the best team games of all time. That is pretty high. Probably even higher than Seth Rogen and Snoop Dogg combined. No, I'm kidding, that is not possible. RimWorld is a sci-fi colony sim driven by an intelligent AI storyteller. Inspired by Dwarf Fortress, Firefly and Dune, RimWorld is designed to co-author tragic, twisted and triumphant stories about imprisoned pirates, desperate colonists, starvation and survival. It works by controlling the random events that the world throws at you. Every thunderstorm, pirate raid and traveling salesman is a card dealt into your story by the AI storyteller. There are several storytellers to choose from. Randy Random does crazy stuff, Cassandra Classic goes for rising tension, and Phoebe Chillax likes to relax. I won't tell you what Tim Penison does. No. You begin with three survivors of a shipwreck on a distant world, and then your story begins. You will have to manage colonists' moods, needs, wounds, illnesses and addictions. The game is not only huge, it's massive. Like, you know, your mama. Roblox Platform allows you to play a wide variety of games, create games by yourself and chat with other players online. It combines gaming, social media and commerce in one, calling itself the ultimate virtual universe. Here you can socialize, build your own space and even earn and spend virtual money. Here you'll find a vast variety of games to play, from role-playing to fighting, from racing to tycoons and many more. Though the platform itself is free, you can make purchases within each game. A portion of the sales, roughly about one-third, goes back to the game's creator, meaning that brands and creative people can earn money if the games they build become popular. So maybe finally it's time for you to quit your job and dive into the world of Roblox. Yeah, there are several self-made millionaires who became rich before the age of 25. So think about it. 
Raft. Build a raft of your dreams and sail into the ocean. That may look like the whole point and story of the game, but your mission is to survive an ocean adventure across dangerous waters. And that won't be easy. Here trapped on a small raft with nothing but a hook made of old plastic, you awake on a vast blue ocean totally alone and with no land in sight. With a dry throat and an empty stomach, you will have to gather debris to survive, expand your raft and be wary of the dangers of the ocean. So you can play the game with friends or with strangers and, obviously, you are thinking about it. If you are really, really hungry, can you cannibalize your friends here? Well, I don't think so, but with the next patch, who knows. Dyson's Fair Program a new kind of supercomputer has been developed, a machine whose superior artificial intelligence and computing capability will push humanity even further. I guess they built it so they could finally invent vodka without a hangover. Huge computing power is required for a task like that, that's for sure. Only one problem stands in the way. There is not enough energy in the whole planet to feed this machine, so you need to construct the Dyson Sphere, the thing that engulfs the star itself and sucks all of its energy. You know, all that energy will not suck itself, and sucking is a hard job. Ask your sister. No Man's Sky Developers say that here you can become anything you want, but it's obvious that you can't become a pirate giraffe with palm trees instead of legs, or an ocean filled with pink shoes. You can't become an ocean here, so realistically speaking, you have limited choices of what you may become. But in general, this game lets you choose from many different paths. Will you be a fighter preying on the weak and taking their delicious potato salad by force, or a merchant who will find rich resources on forgotten worlds and exploit them for the highest prices, or maybe an explorer. Go beyond the known frontier and discover places and things that no one has ever seen before, like, you know, whiskey without a hangover. Nobel Prize guaranteed. That's not how the Nobel Prize works. Oh, shut up. So in general, No Man's Sky procedurally generates the whole universe. It's still a bit smaller than your mama, but it will be enough for you to dive in for a few days at least, or maybe more. A lot of people who left comments on Steam, for example, have from about 20 to 150 hours of playtime. You can also play it in VR mode, although it's not a requirement by any means. Tailspire it is a beautiful way to play pen and paper RPGs, except here you won't need pen and paper. Instead, you can bring your own stories to life and embark upon campaigns together with your friends. Regardless of where you are in the world, the engine of Tailspire will do everything it can to make you happy. Well, sadly, it can't make potato salad. Just a disclaimer. So, in a way, it's a tabletop game where rules, battles and adventures are supervised by AI. As developers say, the beauty of real-world tabletop gaming here meets the endless possibilities of a digital world. Here you can build your adventures without compromising the handcrafted aesthetic of using traditional miniatures. You can take on a mantle of multiple heroes and creatures, manage your stats and express yourself using the emote system. Perform dice rolls directly on board and interact with your environment. As a game master, you can dazzle and thrill your friends by building expansive maps, setting up shots and controlling immersive soundscapes to bring all your delightful and devious designs to life. I also have to say that Tale Spy is not tied to a specific game or rule set. You make rules or bend them as you wish and the game makes sure that no one can break them. Tale Spy is in early access right now, so don't expect miracles, but hey, early access game with 94% of positive reviews? Now I've seen everything. Terraria the game is way more than just a flat version of Minecraft. Terraria is so much more beautiful, with more special effects and more dynamic fights. Here you can craft hundreds of items, build houses or even castles in any form you desire. Yes, even in that one you are thinking about. Castle of Boob? Yes, the Castle of Boob. Here you'll have to survive dangerous nights, defeat waves of enemies and dig down below to encounter some unspeakable horrors. Yeah, really, some of them are really difficult to describe, although don't play it alone. Play it with your wife, brother, friend or mother-in-law. You will enhance the experience many, many times. Factorio the game has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam, so I can guarantee that you can buy and enjoy this game without fear. Just keep in mind that it's never on sale, so don't wait for a discount. The price is rooted. So this is a game about building and creating automated factories to produce items of increasing complexity within an infinite 2D world. Use your imagination to design your factory, combine simple elements into amazing structures, and finally protect it from the local creatures who don't really like you. So what are you waiting for? 
boy, it's your chance to make the biggest and greatest potato salad factory in the entire universe. Game is great, seriously. And now is the best time for you to press that like button. There is no way in the world that you have watched so far and you didn't like what you see. Press the like button now and I will marinate a herring in your honor. Also subscribe, that is mandatory. The Planet Crafter the game is still in early access, but it already has an overwhelmingly positive review score on Steam. The adventure here starts literally the same as in Subnautica and many other alien planet exploration games. You are falling from space in a tiny capsule that will be your only home and link to humanity. So you manage to land with all your body parts intact and may start exploring unfriendly nature around you. Well, alright, I ain't gonna lie, in the Planet Crafter you ain't gonna find any hostile enemies. It's a very relaxing game where you don't have to worry about creating new weapons to defend yourself from large alien monsters, nothing like that. You have to gather minerals and resources to survive, and craft all the tools you'll need in order to fulfill your mission, which is to terraform this planet and make it habitable for humans. And half of humanity has boobs, so j just saying, a noble goal. Also keep in mind that this is not just a crafting game, you will explore old crash ships and ruins and discover a planet full of mystery. If interested, keep in mind that you can play the demo version on Steam for free. GTA 5 while in this most famous game ever, you will take on the role of a street hustler, retired bank robber and a psychopath. Those are three different people and not your one and only alcoholic Uncle Steve. So here we have to pull off a series of dangerous heists. Although let's be honest, here you are just to steal cars and planes for your own pure enjoyment. And you will ignore the story for the most part. Has anyone ever finished this game? Well, I know that a lot of people did that, but it's somehow hard to believe. There are so many distractions, like this one for example. Anyway, this is the game which will encourage you to drive slowly down the alley with your windows down, spreading hip-hop music to your puny neighbors. Totally Accurate Battle Simulator if you are just bored and want to kill some time in single player without thinking too much, I doubt there is a better game for that than Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. At first, it's really funny. Second, it challenges your IQ and actual tactical skills. All you need to do is to choose your units, place them strategically and press the fight button. They will do all the battling part by themselves and you will observe it like some overarching god who has no power to influence anything anymore. So when your army is ripped apart and its scattered remains lie on the ground, then you may think of another strategy and try again, and then again. Some of the battles in the campaign are crazy hard and will squeeze your IQ through your nostrils. Also, if you have some doubts, the game has about 100,000 reviews left on Steam and the score is really close to 100%. I'm not kidding, it's probably one of the best rated games on the whole Steam. Starbound this is basically a terraria in space where you create your own story. There is no wrong way to play. You can go and save the universe from the forces that destroyed your home, uncovering greater galactic mysteries in the process. Or you may wish to ignore this heroic journey entirely in favor of colonizing uncharted planets, collecting rare creatures or delve into dangerous dungeons and lay claim to otherworldly treasures. Discover ancient temples and modern cities, trees with eyes, mischievous penguins and talking ding-dongs. Well, you'll be first to find those but you never know, universe is endless. Rust the only aim here is to survive. Everything wants you to die. The island's wildlife, other inhabitants, the environment, other survivors, and so on. So do whatever it takes to last another night. The game itself is an MMO in very active development, with a guaranteed content patch every month. From regular balance fixes and improvements to AI and graphic updates, to adding content like new maps, musical instruments, trains and drones, as well as regular seasons and events, there is always something interesting or dangerous, or both, happening on the island. You'll find procedurally generated worlds with map editor support. You can host your own servers, ride a vast array of vehicles from cars and trains to hot air balloons and helicopters. You can build houses, farm or do almost anything you want. The game is huge. Not as huge as your mama though. Townscaper what a beautiful game this is. Well, it's hard to call it a game, to be fair. There are no goals or gameplay, just plenty of building and plenty of beauty. That's it. As developers say, Townscaper is an experimental passion project, more of a toy than a game. Pick colors from the palette, plop down colored blocks of houses on the irregular grid, and watch Townscaper's underlying algorithm automatically turn those blocks into cute little houses, arches, stairways, bridges, and lush backyards. You can build your own cold beer town, cold beerville, or even whole called Beeristan and enjoy the amazing view. Wolheim 
Most of us can remember the hype it caused on release date. And the hype is well deserved, this game is really a masterpiece with a review score, never, at least on Steam, never below 90%. It may scare you that the game is still in early access after all those years, but if you focus on the main objectives only, it will still provide you with more than 70 hours of gameplay. And keep in mind that on sale you can get it for about 12 euros or dollars, so it's a nice addition to your wishlist. And in general, Wallhave is a brutal exploration and survival game for 1 to 10 players, set in a procedurally generated world inspired by Norse mythology. You will craft powerful weapons, construct longhouses, grow your balls and slay mighty foes to prove yourself to Odin. And now thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye!